Evening boys and girls and Midway families. Uh, this week for our Tuesday Tale, I have an opportunity to share with you a story by the name of For the Love of Autumn. It's uh, written and illustrated by Patricia Polacco. All right, can anyone tell me what the word autumn means? That's a vocabulary word that we can use. Has anybody ever heard that word before? No, sure. Okay, you have, Kaylee. What, what, what have we heard that word for? Autumn is another word that we use to describe fall. And so um, now let's look at the title of this book at the picture. What do we think that this book is going to be about? We want to make a prediction. What do we think that this book is going to be about? All right, Rakeem? About, about love, Armani? The cat. the cat, okay. Yes, ma'am, Kylie Brown, huh? Friendship. Okay, so we said by love because our title is for the love of autumn. So we have an opportunity. We can make several predictions about what this text is going to be about. And then that word autumn, I told you it's another word for what? Fall. Fall. Very good. All right. So when Danielle saw autumn for the very first time, she held the tiny kitten in the palm of her hand. She marveled at how perfect and how small the creature was. Danielle named her Autumn because it was almost Halloween. It was love at first sight. Poor little thing. You look like you haven't eaten for quite a while, Danielle said as she gave her warm milk and a bit of food. Then Danielle made a special little bed for her to sleep in. She set out water and kibble and litter box. Danielle looked forward to coming home so that she could hold and pet Autumn. As each day passed, she loved the little kid more and more. Soon, Autumn was scurrying around the apartment. She tipped over the trash, pulled the laundry out of the hamper, knocked all the pencils and the papers off the desk, and jumped out at Danielle's ankles as she walked by. All right, so we had an opportunity to introduce to Autumn. Who is Autumn? The kid. The kid, okay. And the main character of this text, what's her name? Danielle. Danielle. Okay, you guys are listening very well. All right. Danielle was a student teacher. When she came home from school and she tried to correct her student's paper, Autumn would lie right in the middle of them. After di dinner, Danielle would pop corn and they'd sit on the uh, sofa together and watch TV. And at bedtime, Autumn would curl up in Danielle's arms and purr and purr and purr until they both drifted to sleep. One day, as Danielle opened her mail, she squealed with delight. Oh, Autumn, I got a teaching job. It's in Port Townsend, Washington. I've always wanted to live by the sea, and Port Townsend is right by the sea. When Danielle packed for the move, Autumn hid in the packing box. She wrestled with the packing shreds and pounced on the bubble wrap, popping it as she landed in it. Okay, so we find out that Danielle has gotten a job and she's going to move to Washington. Has anybody ever heard of Washington? You have? Okay. Does anybody know where Washington might be? Okay, let's think about that one, okay? Danielle and Autumn drove together all the way up the coast of California, through Oregon and into the state of Washington. Finally, as they came over the crest of a tall hill, there it was, the beautiful little village right next to the sea. The school had arranged for Danielle to rent a lovely cottage right on the bay, an enchanted cottage, she thought when she saw it. Autumn loved her little house. The very first thing she did was disappear right up the chimney. When the kitten finally came down, she was covered with soot and ashes. Anybody know what soot is? No. All right. Nobody know what soot is? It's the residue when we burn things, especially in chimneys, we have a residue and it makes soot. It's kind of like a fine little dirt that's in the chimney sometimes. Oh, uh, something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Autumn helped Danielle unpack. She got inside every paper bag that hit the floor, jumped into every box that was emptied, and almost knocked over a stack of Danielle's favorite china. The first evening, Autumn and Danielle sat on the sofa eating popcorn and looking out the window at the sea as the warm fire crackled in the fireplace. 
Danielle loved her new school and adored each and every one of her students. Miss Parks, they asked her one day, are you married? No, not yet. But someday, when just the right man comes along, I will be. How will you know if he's the one? One of the children asked, I hear the sound of thunder, smell Jasmine, and the wind blew his hair. I'll know that he's exactly the one. Oh, Miss Parks, do you think he's out there somewhere, little Mary Proctor asked? Indeed, I do. I can just feel it, Miss Parks answered wistfully. Yes, Danielle Parks loved her students, and she loved her little cottage almost as much. She planted a cottage garden. She pulled weeds and fertilized the lawn and trimmed the hedges. She even painted the wonderful old trellis. As for Autumn, she loved the place. She raced about the garden, stalked butterflies in the flower beds, climbed the apple trees, and even perched herself atop the trellis so she could watch the birds in the new bird bath. Both of them settled into their new life in the little cottage by the sea. One afternoon when Danielle got home from school, a terrible storm was raging. There was thunder, the sky was black, and the raindrops, big as bumblebees, hit the roof, a pinging sound. Autumn didn't greet Danielle at the door like she always did. Danielle searched the house but couldn't find Autumn anywhere. She called her next door neighbors to see if they had seen her. Oh, she's probably hiding out somewhere with this fierce storm, her neighbor reassured her. But Danielle was worried. Late that night, Danielle heard a scratching sound at the door. She opened it and there was Autumn. She was soaking wet and her tail had a huge gash in it and it was bleeding. Danielle reached for her. Autumn shrank from her touch and ran into the night. Danielle ran after her. She walked around the neighborhood in driving rain, calling Autumn, Autumn, but Autumn didn't come. She completely disappeared. What do you guys think that might have happened to Autumn? Yes. Okay, Armani? She might have ran away, Rakeem. Oh, that's a possibility because we know that she was hurt. So that's a good way to make a prediction. Okay. When Danielle left for school that morning, she left the back door ajar in the hope that Autumn would come home. All that day at school, her students noticed that something was wrong. Miss Parks, where do you think Autumn could be? Jamie Ross asked after Danielle told the class why she was worried. I think all of us should come to Miss Parks after school today and look for Autumn, Jerome Bolton announced. Caleb Dirk stepped up. Yeah, some of us can take the beach. You guys can look up the woods on the hill and you girls stop at every house to see if anyone has seen her. The children were true to their word. They came, they all came to Miss Parks' cottage. They launched a search that would shame the FBI, but alas, there was no autumn to be found. Days stretched into weeks. Danielle cried almost every night thinking of autumn. There had been rumors that a mountain lion had been seen and her cottage was very near a state park where one had been sighted. Danielle feared the very worst. She walked around the little college and cried whenever she had looked at anything that was Autumn's. She picked up Autumn's empty little bed and ran her hands over it. She looked at Autumn's paw prints still on the windowsill. She didn't eat popcorn anymore, nor sit and watch the sea by the fire. Danielle's heart was broken. Finally, Danielle put away Autumn's food and water bowls. She took all of her toys and put them in a bin in the laundry room, but she couldn't bear to put Autumn's bed away. She couldn't bear to brush Autumn's fur off her sofa cushions. Danielle ached from the loss of her heartbeat of her little cottage because to her, that is what Autumn was. So how is Danielle feeling right now? She's very sad. She's very sad. On Saturday, Danielle and her students planted a small bed of flowers where Autumn used to lie in the shade of the apple tree. The children had polished the rocks and placed them in a circle on the ground. 
Well, always call this Autumn's Garden. Betty Barber whispered softly. I think she would have loved it, Miss Park said wistfully. Just as the children were about to leave, there was a small sound and something jumped off the trellis into Miss Parks' arms. It was Autumn! Autumn, Danielle cried as she hugged her. Where have you been? The children surrounded them and gave them a group hug. You've been gone for six whole weeks. But Miss Parks, she doesn't look like she's been in the woods. Look, her fur is shiny and clean. She looks nice and healthy, Benny Barber noticed. And her tail, Danielle said as she examined it, there was a horrible gash on it the night she ran off. It looks like it had been shaved and some stitches taken uh, in it. Someone has taken wonderful care of Autumn. Who do we think that possibly take, uh, took care of Autumn? Her, well, remember her neighbor said that they had not seen them. All right, Armani? The student, maybe a student. Okay, let's make a prediction, okay? Autumn stuck close to home for the next week until one day she left again, only to return the following weekend wearing a flea collar. Well, for goodness sakes, who put this flea collar on you? Danielle wondered as she took it off. I have a collar for you, sweetie. Pink, your favorite color. Then one day, Autumn went away again and came back Two days later, with a phone number scrawled on her collar. Hmm. Children, Danielle announced in the morning, someone has put their number on my cat's collar. Wow, they all exclaimed. We have a real mystery on our hands, Johnny Carter said. He thought for a minute, someone must think that Autumn is their cat. Well, she's my cat, Danielle asserted. Miss Parks, you have to call that number. You have to tell the person she is your cat, Benny Barber insisted. That evening, Danielle paced the floor. She wasn't accustomed to calling someone whom she had never seen before, but Autumn circled the phone and kept looking up at, at her as if she wanted to call. Where well, here goes, Danielle said as she dialed the number. A voice answered the phone. Yes, Danielle started. Uh, well, my cat seems to have your phone number on her collar. Oh, thank God you found Stormy. Boys and girls, who's Stormy? The cat. Who's Stormy? The baby. Okay, somebody has named uh, Autumn Stormy. Okay, let's see. Who is this? The voice sounded relieved. I've been so worried. Stormy, her name isn't Stormy. Her name is Autumn, Danielle, her face flushed. Oh no, I named her Stormy because she came to my house on a terrible stormy night, badly injured. Her tail had been slashed, probably a mountain lion. No, sir, you don't understand. I have had Autumn since she was a kitten. She disappeared on a stormy night from my house. She's my cat. Well, if she's so precious to you, then why was she out in such a terrible storm? Danielle hung up quickly. What nerve, she snorted. What a rude man. So what do we think is going to happen with Stormy slash Autumn? You think Miss Parks is going to keep her or the other person is going to keep her? Both. Both. Okay, they could share her. Okay. Okay, let's see what's going to happen, okay? When she told her class about the phone call, they were all intrigued. She spent a whole afternoon doing drawings of what she imagined the rude man looked like. That afternoon, Autumn came in the house with a note attached to her collar. When Danielle opened it, it simply read, Please accept my apologies. I didn't mean to be rude. Danielle quickly sat behind and wrote a note back. I apologize as well. Perhaps I was rude too. She attached the note to Autumn's collar and sent her out the door. Two afternoons later, Autumn came back with another note attached. Since we both care so deeply for the little kitty, perhaps we can share her. I live alone and truly love her company. Mm. What do you guys think is going to happen? Yeah. Uh, oh, you think the two of them are going to get married because they love Autumn so much? Oh, that's a good prediction. Let's see. When Danielle shared the most recent note with her class, all of them decided that she needed to invite the note writer over to her house so uh, she could meet him. Oh, children, I'm not in the habit of inviting, inviting a perfect stranger to my home, 
But Miss Parks, he's obviously a lonely old man and can't be a bad person if he helped Autumn. Couldn't he? Benny Barber said. All right, then. I'm going to ask him to stop by this Saturday, she said. Oh, can we come too? The entire class pleaded. We want to meet him. Miss Parks agreed. And all that afternoon, the children helped her compose the invitation. All right. Saturday was a dark and rainy day, but every kid in Danielle's class was at her house by early afternoon. All of them had their faces pasted to the front window to see what would be like when he came to the door. Every time a car drove up, the children would shriek with delight only to sigh when the car passed by. Finally, just when it looked like he wasn't really coming and they had all turned away, there was a knock at the door. Autumn ran to the door and Miss Parks opened it. There was a clap of thunder. The wind came up and blew the trellis so that the jasmine vine unraveled and the clump it fell into her hands. Then another gust blew his hair into his eyes. Miss Parks, I'm Stephen Naughton. I think we share a wonderful little cat. Had we heard something before about jasmine and, and a wind coming in somebody's hair? I believe at the beginning of the story, we, we heard something. Miss Parks said that if she was ever to meet a man, that would be the sign. I think we have a sign, boys and girls. Let's see. Autumn sprang into his arms and purred and purred and purred. Danielle beamed as she gazed into his face. This little cat is the heartbeat of my house, Mr. Nodden said softly as he caressed Autumn. A clap of thunder echoed over the bay and the wind caught the jasmine vine and scattered blossoms everywhere. Why? Her students whispered to one another, Miss Parks has found the very one and Autumn had found them both. Stephen Naughton and Danielle Parks were married the next spring. They shared not only the enchanted cottage by the sea, but walks on the beach, evenings by the fire eating popcorn, and most of all, their love for autumn. All right. All right, so boys and girls, this concludes our Tuesday tale for today. I'm going to ask a few questions. Now, I don't want you all to answer because I want my people online to answer. So we already know what was the name of our kitten. Our kitten had two names. And so what I want in the comment section is a full sentence that says the name of the kitten was both names. What was the name of the main character of this text? And so I want you to respond in a complete sentence. The name of the main character of this text is. My third question, what job did the main character have? What job did the main character have? And my last question, boys and girls, what state did the main character move to in this text? Okay, so what I want you to do, boys and girls, is to answer in the comment section. And the first one to answer tomorrow morning, I have some nice prizes. Thank you, boys and girls, for.